Hi folks, this is Dave from Race Coordinator. I'm coming to you again with another video installment. Today I want to talk about um, track relays and call buttons, and we're going to do that um, using the Viasu track interface that was provided by me, provided to me by Paul from Viasu. Um, of course, the standard disclaimer comes with this video. I am uh, the author of Race Coordinator, the Race Coordinator software, and I am partnered with Paul from Viasu. Um, that is, he provides the hardware platform and I provide the software and together we provide what I believe is the one of the best, if not the best, track interface uh, platforms out there. It is 100% plug and play and it can do pretty much anything the, the race coordinator software can do, which if you've used the race coordinator software, it can do quite a lot. Um, so I just wanted to be clear and upfront that I am partnered with with Viasu, and so take what I say about the track interface or how great it is with with you know what, a grain of salt, whatever you want to do. Um, what I want to do today, though, is show you that track interface in action with the Race Coordinator software, and show you how you can take advantage of the relay features that um, Viasu and Race Coordinator support. So that said. I'm going to pan back over here to what is a fairly, what might be a familiar looking setup now. Um, this is a fully blown out three lane Viasu track interface. Um, I say it's fully blown out because it has nine track sensors, that is three track sensors per lane. There is a, as you saw in the previous video, there's a segment timer here. There is a lap timer here, I don't know if you can see it. And then there is a pit end timer under this bridge over here where my finger is. Um, together, you can do um, you can pit in between the sensors here. Um, you can do segment timing at this point here between the start finish line and the st and the segment timer, and then between the segment timer and the start finish line. And of course, up there you've got next to the laptop itself, you've got a LED start tree. Um, and on top here, you've got three LEDs at the start finish line that are the heat indicator LEDs. These are the um, this is basically what is visible on the track, a fully blown out setup. Um, there's not much more you could add to this, although there probably is, um, aside from more lanes, of course. Um, what you don't see in what's under the track are the per lane relays and per lane call buttons, and that's what I want to talk about today. So um, many users wonder why you would even have a relay itself or a call button itself. So um, we'll talk about that, and we'll talk about the features that Race Coordinator has that support those things. So first and foremost, you can have two forms of relays um, that are typical in, in, on, a, on a racetrack, and those would be a master relay setup, where you have one relay controlling power to all your lanes um, all at once, or you could have per lane relays, in which you have one relay per lane, as it sounds, and in that case, each relay will control power to a single lane, so that you can have one lane with power on, one lane with power off, both lanes with power on, both lanes with power off, however you, whatever's going on in the race that dictates those things. So, so why would you do that? Well, in the traditional setup, you'd have a master master relay and a master call button, and the idea would be that when a track call happens, whether it's via the call button or through the RMS software's hotkeys or whatever, the race director at the keyboard, um, track power would be cut. And the idea is that if there's a major problem on the track, a, a huge pileup, something dangerous, something that might damage the cars, things like that, you would hit the call button, track power goes off, all the cars stop, you can resolve the problem, you can hit the call button again and resume the race. Um, no harm done except for a pause in the race. Um, some people like to do that, some people don't. You know, it's really to each their own what they want to do because what ends up happening is that can, that can really mess up uh, track flow, especially if you're using the call button every time somebody de-slots. You know, if you've got a junior racer out there, you might be hitting the, the, the call button every couple of laps because they're constantly coming off the track. Um, Race Coordinator has a solution to that problem, and we'll talk about that in a, in a, in a, in a separate video than this one, um, but, we'll, but for now, that's it. So to each their own as far as what they want in terms of master and, and master call buttons and master relays. Now, I mentioned we also support per lane call buttons and per lane relays, and, and why would you do that? Well, the per lane call buttons aren't so obvious, and we're not going to talk about that in this video, although my track is wired with them, and what that means, just so you're aware, is that the race coordinator software not only knows that a call button was pressed, but it knows which call button was pressed at the driver station, and so that's going to be key with some of the new race features that we'll talk about again in the next video. But why would you have per lane relays? Well out of the box today in the software that's out there today is an official release and in the beta releases of Race Coordinator, per lane relays are useful in a couple of different race formats. First off, if you use hot starts, that means that the track power is turned on during your during your start sequence at the beginning of a heat. You can you can use per lane relays to penalize a driver for false starts. And that's huge because if you if you if you don't have per lane relays and you want to do false start penalties, you can only add arbitrary laps or arbitrary time onto the driver's scores, and the problem with that is that it's very inaccurate because 
if you, you penalize a driver a lap, they have to go all the way around the track again during the fall start to get back to the start finish line. So you're really penalizing them two laps, but then you're not penalizing them a full lap depending on how early they fall started. If you think about it, penalizing a driver by a, a, a lap count is a very sort of ambiguous thing because the more you fall start, the less you're really penalizing them when, when the driver can actually just drive around the track. So I'm going to demonstrate to you now the coolness of a, of the, of a false start. So. Um, or, or of how it works. I've got two cars on the track. I've got an orange car and a blue car. Um, the orange car is going to false start, and what you'll see is that he's going to be stopped on the track for a good 10 seconds. That's the penalty I've set up. Again, this is any amount of time you want. And then, the, But what you'll see is that once the race goes green, the, re the blue car will have power while the, while the orange car is waiting to go, and that's going to be crucial. So I'm going to start it up, and I'm going to immediately false start on the orange car. Here comes my start sequence. There's the false start. You'll notice that car stopped because he's now got the penalty. The blue car needs a kick. You can see he's got power and he's off my table, but he had power. Um, that's the main thing. Now you'll notice the orange car is still not going, and there he goes. So he served his 10 second false start penalty, and now he's racing around the track as if he, ooh, oh boy, as if <laughs> he hit the controller, um, as, if, uh, as if everything was okay. Had he completed that lap, the, the lap time for, for that false start penalty driver would have included just the time that he, he was waiting at the start finish line serving his false start penalty. So you can see in the case of a false start setup um, configuration, it's awesome because you can, you can accurately penalize the driver exactly how much time you want them to wait as a penalty for that false start. And, and the penalty, by the way, doesn't start until the race, the heat actually goes green. So it doesn't matter how fast, how, how early they jump the start, they will be penalized X time from the moment the heat goes green. Um, I'm not going to show it to you on this, in this video, but the other use of a false start penalty would be, in the, in the case you can see here, I've got it actually set up, if it's a fuel race. Now, what, what can you do with, false, with, with per lane relays and fuel races? Well, if the driver runs out of fuel, what do you do? In a normal race without per lane relays, you would, you would have to let the driver just drive around the track and do whatever they wanted. They could distract other drivers, whatnot, um, and through through race corner configuration, maybe that's what you want. And you can even, even if you have per-lane relays, you can let them do that if you want. However, if you want their heat, for example, to be over as a penalty for running out of fuel, you can use a per-lane relays, set up the race coordinator configuration to, to, to stop the lanes when the driver runs out of heat, out, out of gas rather, out of fuel, and then the driver won't be able to race another inch until the next heat. And then again, in configuration, maybe you want to end their race or not, but that's all in the, in the fuel race configuration, which I don't really want to talk about now. It's too complex. Um, so false start penalties and fuel penalties are the two out-of-the-box things you can use per lane relays for. Um, and we'll talk about a third one in the next video um, when we talk about um, uh, the, the per lane call buttons as well as the per lane relays because that's another track feature I want to talk or another RMS feature and another feature that the Viasu uh, track inter plug and play track interface supports. So, but that's all I wanted to show you for now. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, hot starts, you know, with false start penalties are really cool. You get an awesome reaction time. You can calculate reaction times when you do it and you can penalize drivers for jumping the gun, um, you know, which which is a really good thing. You can accurately penalize them rather. So, anyway, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed it.